All right, boys and girls, always a great day to break out a classic 22. This is a nice old Remington 550-1. Let's have a little fun, shoot this gun some today. All right, we're gonna run 21, 22 shorts. Here we go. Ha <laughs> ha, yeehaw. <laughs> yeehaw. <laughs> Guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. All right, you probably notice this is not where you normally see us filming. We built a new pistol range, so this is where you're gonna be seeing our videos from now on. Now, this is still pretty fresh. We don't have grass growing quite so good on the berm just yet, but I promise we're gonna beautify it a little bit for you. But welcome back nonetheless. Uh, the Remington 550-1 is a really special old rifle, uh, probably arguably one of Remington's best rifles, and we are gonna break into this thing and chat about it a little bit as we go here. Uh, I think you're really gonna enjoy this. I do wanna take a moment to thank our friends at Sonoran Desert Institute for supporting our videos. If you're looking for a career in gunsmithing technology, they have some awesome programs. You can learn about reloading, gunsmithing, all types of stuff with the business. Look into them. They got some great financial incentives, great distance learning programs, wonderful instructors, very capable group of people. SDI, Sonoran Desert Institute. Check them out and uh, tell them we sent you. Okay. So I was up at a little shop uh, in North Georgia and I saw this 550-1 on the rack and I couldn't resist because it's just uh, such a classic uh, Remington rifle, okay? Uh, they've gone through a few revisions of this gun over the years, but they produced these uh, from around the early 40s to around 1971 or 72, I think 71. Uh, so definitely a nice old vintage one. This is a pre-68 because it lacks any serial numbers, okay? So if you pick up a Remington or Winchester or an old school 22 and you don't see serial numbers, it's because before 68, they weren't required to put serial numbers on the guns. Uh, so this is definitely a pre-68 and arguably, wow, one clean rifle. Now uh, there are some production codes that are on some of these guns that can give you a little bit of an idea when they were possibly produced. Uh, I believe they started making these around 46 or so. Uh, this one's definitely not a 46, but I would say, Mid 40s to mid 50s would be my uh, most reasonable guess because the date code on this particular gun is, um, it's, I don't know if it's maybe a little bit misstamped, but there's an A and a G. It wouldn't be G because G as a date code would be 1938 and they weren't making this rifle in 1938. So it's anyone's guess. There is a 4.5. I doubt that means 1945 because this thing wasn't produced at the earliest until 46, I believe. But the 550A1, one of the coolest features about it, uh, it is a semi-auto, okay? Uh, it's a tube-fed rifle. But one of the coolest features about these is that it will feed short, long, and long rifle semi-automatically. That's just the coolest thing ever. So we ran some full-powered short rounds there uh, in the intro. That was some 29-grain CCI 22 short with the plated projectiles. Well, out of curiosity the other day, I had some of the CB shorts, which they're running a little bit slower. In fact, a lot slower. Those shorts were running 10, uh, 1080. The CB shorts are running 710. That's a really light load to run a bolt on a semi-auto. Will it run? All right, so let's load up some CB shorts. Now, I already know the answer because I tested it the other day. But Chad and I were, were giving each other some devilish grins thinking, you know, if you found one of these beater 550-1s uh, or one of these old 550s in a little pawn shop that it looked real ragged and, and beat up, there is a lot of meat on the end of this barrel, plenty of space to cut some threads on it and throw a suppressor on it. Now, I'm not going to dare do that to this wonderful example here. But those of you who care a little less uh, for originality, this would be one interesting suppressor host with some 22 short and a worthy can. Uh, I would imagine it would work quite well. Now, uh, it's just real interesting. The only thing that I've never liked about these guns, a uh, couple of things. One thing that, that's a, kind of a negative feature for me is the fact that the disassembly is a little bit cumbersome. Uh, so they are relatively difficult to disassemble just for everyday maintenance and cleaning. So that's one tiny thing to consider is that, you know, they're not the easiest things to care for. Um, two, parts availability. Uh, there are some parts out there for these guns. They are relatively available, but you don't want to go breaking stuff on them because, you know, it is an older design. 
and it's not like they're growing on trees anymore. And I believe, I don't think Remington supports this rifle anymore, obviously. Um, so the parts have long since been, you know, unavailable. Uh, but they are relatively rugged little guns. They hold up quite well. They're very accurate. And, uh, you know, it's just, you don't see a lot of designs that can run 22 short in a semi-automatic fashion and do it with any degree of reliability and, uh, and accuracy. So these guns are just neat. Um, the other thing that is a little cumbersome about it is the tube loading. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of tube loaded guns. It's a little bit time consuming, but there's 21, 22 short CBs. These are running 710. Okay, let's see if it'll run a whole tube reliably. And I'm just gonna take a few shots. Now I tried to knock my plate over, but despite 21 rounds of 22 short, I just could not get this uh, plate to be persuaded to fall over. I'm just gonna go through here and uh, I'm gonna put a few on the burn back there. I want you to hear how quiet these 22 shorts are out of this little rig, okay? All right, 22 shorts moving 710 CBs. Uh-oh, spoke too soon. <laughs> I ran them the other day. Let's see if I can get them to run. Yep, they're barely kicking the bolt back, but hear how quiet they are? Isn't that cool? <laughs> Not 100% reliable, but definitely nice. <laughs> I spoke too soon on the CBs. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, how about a soda? <laughs> okay. Now, if you were to put maybe just a little bit lighter spring in that thing, it probably run those CBs with 110% reliability. But there's one of the minor shortcomings is that as a semi-auto, you saw that it ran the full power shorts, no problem. CBs, okay, struggling a little bit with the CBs, but that's an interesting point. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and load some long rifle in it. I've got some CCI green tag. This is their competition round nose. Now it's moving 1070. So you see that it's just a heavier bullet moving about the same speed that the shorts were running. And one other thing I probably wanna mention on this if you are gonna feed this thing a steady diet of shorts, and then you're gonna to try to shoot long rifles through it, you probably wanna go through and just scrub the chamber here and there, uh, just to make sure you don't get any weirdness. Uh, much in the same way that if you were shooting 38s in your 357 Magnum, and then you go try to put 357s in it after it's gotten really good and fouled, sometimes they can kind of stick in there and cause some issues from time to time. Uh, so if you're gonna feed it a steady diet, you just gotta keep that chamber nice and clean. But it is cool the way that bolt works, and uh, it's, it's just a neat little gun, okay? All right, that's 15 rounds of 22 long rifle. Okay, now it should run these no problem. The safety is located uh, here on the right side of the rifle, very much like a lot of the Remingtons of the era. You just uh, pull it to the rear for safe, push it forward for fire, and you can see the red uh, exposed to let you know that the gun is off safe. I'll put it back on safe for a second. The sights are very similar, you know, a very simple type of arrangement. Just a simple stamp sheet metal rear sight with a little basic elevation adjustment and a real simple uh, front sight. So nothing overly fancy. The bluing is not super fancy. There is a 3 8 inch dovetail cut into the receiver on this gun to accept a scope. And you got this neat little uh, shell deflector here. Uh, a lot of times you see these missing, okay? And one, one point of note here, it doesn't look like a single screw has been turned on this gun. It looks, I mean, I wouldn't say brand new, but for its age, certainly unmolested. Oh, well, until I got a hold of it, but. <laughs> All right, we're gonna shoot some green tags here. These are gonna be a little louder. All right, see if Mr. Gopher wants to say hello.
Yes, sir. Wow. Yes. Wow. That'd be one heck of a, uh, a squirrel annihilator. Okay. We're going to pick up the, uh, the speed here on the cartridge. We're going to run some CCI mini mags. This is just an assortment of ammo I had laying around I thought we'd try out in this little guy. It's just such a classic 22. You know, uh, I've, I've always been a real big fan of the Ruger 1022 and some of the others that are out there. Um, but this is just one of those kind of guns that I think falls a little bit by the wayside. You know, a lot of people associate uh, 22s with like maybe the old Marlin Model 60s in terms of a tube gun. Uh, maybe like the Winchester Model 74, the Winchester Model 120. You know, there's some other tube-fed guns out there. I mean, there's a lot of them, actually. And I think a lot of people tend to uh, flock to the mag-fed guns a little bit more just for convenience and everything. But uh, I feel like these guns get overlooked, okay, a little bit here and there. Okay, get in there. Okay. All right, CCI Mini Mags out of the 550-1. Now, there are a couple of different variants of this gun. There's a 550A, there's a 550, 550-1. There's some minor differences. They changed around the extractor a little bit, a couple of the minor details and things. Uh, there's not a ton of differences, mainly, I believe mainly the extractor. Uh, but the 550-1, in, in my opinion, is, is certainly the, the sort of legacy uh, you know, designation for this particular gun. Uh, they did make a lot of these and it was a very successful gun for Remington. Okay, let's try out the mini mags. These are gonna be a little louder. Let's see if we can actually knock over one of the poppers. How about that? And I'll shoot a few sodas. <laughs> Ain't quite enough to knock it off there. Not bad. Okay, one more tube. I think you guys get the idea. Um, so another thing about this rifle that's kind of cool, price, okay? They're very affordable. Now, some of the more cherry examples of these things that are floating around out there can certainly bring, you know, some considerable money, depending on the condition, but you can regularly pick these guys up for, you know, a couple of two or 300 bucks. So it does represent a very affordable rimfire. Um, granted, not the cheapest thing in the world, but I think for the, the history of these guns and how old some of them are and how well they've kind of stood the test of time, I, I feel like they've really held up great. And uh, this would be a great little squirrel rifle or just something to get out and plink and practice with and have a little fun, take the kids out, you know? Uh, I'd say the length of pull, it is definitely more of an adult length rifle. Uh, it'd probably be a little cumbersome for some of your uh, smaller statured shooters and stuff like that. So definitely not a youth rifle. I would put this rifle as being uh, more of a usable plinking and hunting tool for someone who likes a full-size rifle. So it may not be best for all small shooters, but all right, a couple of more rounds. It hasn't been too uh, unreliable or anything. I mean, the, the shorts we knew were going to pose potentially an issue. It was only the CB so far that's really given us too much of an issue. All right, I'm gonna take out some sodas using some of the mini mags, okay? Let's try them out. Of course, I had to say, <laughs> I had to say something. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Not bad. Cool old gun, something kind of quirky. Maybe some of you have never seen these before. I thought I'd make a quick little video and uh, show you guys what these are all about. Certainly an interesting part of Remington's lineup from back in the day. If you can find one, certainly worth looking at. Really neat little piece of hardware. A uh, big thank you to all the folks who have supported us over the years. Those of you who have uh, purchased t-shirts on Ballistic Inc. I know a lot of you have donated money on Patreon. More importantly, a lot of you guys have continued to watch over the years and have continued to support us in our efforts. And uh, it's been a long road. We've been through a lot as a channel. We've uh, made a lot of, you know, changes and we've, we've done a few things here and there and, and just sort of, you know, fell into what we're doing now today. And uh, it, it's been a long road. I appreciate y'all being a part of it. 
uh, we are going to beautify the range. I know she's a little ho-hum ho looking right now, but uh, in time we are going to uh, plant some cool trees and some flowers and make it feel a little bit more like home. But uh, big thank you to everybody that supported us over the years. We hope you enjoyed this video. So first video on the new range, 550-1 from Remington, nice classic rifle. Many more videos on the way. We'll see you guys soon.